Hey guys, I'm at the base of Cascade Falls taking our lunch break. And one question I forgot to ask Laurie a couple of weeks ago, I can ask him now. How are you, Laurie? Good. You know, I never ask you, how did you like Aconcagua expedition overall? Well, it was a good learning experience. I would like if we'd been able to make the summit, but yeah. it just so happens that the window was closed due to the storm that hit the mountain. Mm -hmm. And it didn't work out timing-wise for us. Okay. But it was really good to get back to the mountain to see how popular it is. Yeah. It's crowded. Mm -hmm. More crowded than I'd ever seen it before. Yeah. And to see the level of people that are trying it. Mm -hmm. It seemed like a lot of people that maybe, maybe that was a little much for them to take on. Yeah. So we had two choices either to wait out the storm and then attempt the summit or return. Of course, we chose to return. What do you, do you think that we made the right call? Uh, our call should have been different. No, well, we actually had three choices. We could have tried in the short time available before the weather was supposed True, to change. True, that's right. To try to push up, but I thought that was falling into the trap that many people uh -huh. get lured into in Aconcagua, uh -huh. which is, oh, weather's coming in, there's going to be a storm, we have to do it now or never. Uh -huh. And then you ascend faster than you should be ascending. Yes. And you run the risk of getting any of the high altitude illnesses, cerebral, exactly. edema, pulmonary, yeah. etc. The alternative to sit and wait, well, the forecast was such that if it cleared when the worst day was over, uh -huh. We still had to move up two camps. Yes. And I did the math on how long it would take, even using porters. Yeah. And it was tight. Mm. And I knew it was important that we get back on schedule. Mm. And it seemed like it would be a stretch. Because mm. we didn't know when the weather was going to improve. Mm. It could stay bad for a number of days, but we knew it would be bad for mm. three to four days. That just made the second half questionable. Hmm. So do I think we made the right decision? Yeah, for us, yes, okay. the right choice. Right. And a uh, few more questions. Uh, how do you, uh, what do you think of how I did on Akankawa expedition? Okay, you did absolutely fine. Your oxygen levels were much higher than anyone I've ever been on Aconcagua with. Wow. You were Thank able you. to move with both your big boots mm -hmm. and your light shoes. You didn't get blisters. You weren't handicapped by your pack yeah. or anything like that. Your gear worked. Yes. You were able to rest on some of the nights. Mm -hmm. So I think all in all, you did very well okay. on the mountain and hopefully you learned a few lessons that will save you some discomfort when you go to the big mountain mm -hmm. Everest. Like getting enough rest wow and if you can't sleep there's ways of dealing with that sure oh, what are some of the things i could do better next time if i go to akankawa okay i would take a couple extra days to pre-acclimatize okay so i would say if you went on your own or if you went with me with you uh, then we would take three days before starting the walk in and go to penitentes and climb a peak each day. Mm. Building up our oxygen O2 levels so that when we walk in, mm. it's a breeze. Yeah. And the big test is the day after you arrive in base camp, do you feel good enough to do a light hike up to Camp 1? Yes. And if you do, that shows that you're acclimating well. Okay. Um, boots worked out okay, sleeping bags, probably a bigger tent in base camp so that you've got a little <laughs> more comfort. Not Nothing wrong yeah. with that lightweight little tent you had, but that was put up at the end of the mm -hmm. day when we arrived. It was a stopgap measure. Mm -hmm. I would say making sure we've got a comfortable base camp. Mm -hmm. um, bigger tent for you if you want mm -hmm. to have that sure just to yourself and then uh, probably a bigger one for myself mm. as well or we share a big tent sure. you know 
These are definitely very good points to consider. What I was looking for is how can I improve my hiking behavior for Aconcagua next time? Like, what are some of the things I should do differently uh, to be a better hiker or a better climber for Aconcagua? Or some of the skills I need to brush up or some of the things I should do better when I'm uh, acting as a hiker. I'm uh, not acting when I'm hiking. Mastering the rest step. Rest step, okay. Yeah, getting it so you've got it wired. Okay. And you know how to do it. Okay. Let me think of the other things. So. Your downhill speed is good. Okay. We're descending in roughly one third the time it takes to ascend, which is good. Okay. Good descent time. I don't know how you could improve on that. Some things you don't want to do faster because mm -hmm. you run the, the risk of making a mistake and getting sure. injured. So yeah. descending, you're doing good. Ascending, you're consistent. Okay. You've got a pace that you stick to. Mm -hmm. I'd say just keep training the way you have been training yeah. by getting out here in, in Canada. Mm -hmm allowing more time to acclimate before we head in to the mountain. Mm -hmm. And I think you might be surprised if you're acclimatized a little better before we go in, mm. how smoothly the whole climb can go. Mm. Nice. Uh, when it comes to pace, uh, especially my pace, do you think my pace was respectful for the mountain like Aconcagua? Or yes. was it too slow or much faster or better than average what? I don't want to say better than average. I want to say it was respectful. Okay. It was a good pace. We made it one day from base camp to Nido de Condores, which yes, is a long way, to, and came yeah. back all within reasonable time. Mm -hmm. At the same time, okay. I was handicapped with having to I climb know. with a shoe with no heel on it. Mm -hmm. I'm pleased that you didn't get any blisters. Thank you. That's a good, a good sign. Thank you. Um, also, two more questions. Mm -hmm. um, there were a lot of unique things happen to you or with you, which had never happened. Do you remember some of those things? You have been to Akankagwa so many times and you have said a few times that Girish, this never happened. Well, the fact that I got blisters on the very first day we went hiking yeah. is extremely unusual. Okay. The fact that I got the blister in the same place you got your blister that infected yes. your right leg, uh, that was strange. Okay. Um, almost getting hit by lightning on the last night. We yeah, were there. that's right. That was strange. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was able to sleep okay. The walk in was all right just hard on my feet. Okay. Normally I don't get blisters walking out. Yeah. But I still had to use those same hiking shoes. Yeah. So I had bad blisters on the walk out. Mm. Now, maybe it's because I haven't been there in a few years, I'd forgotten some of the basics, which mm. is never go in with new shoes. Yes. Not that these were new, but mm -hmm. they weren't well broken in. I would have been far better with a pair of less efficient runners trail mm -hmm. runners they were maybe almost getting worn out mm -hmm. but they were not going to give me any issues with my mm -hmm. feet um some of the unique things that never happened in 36 times <laughs> well there's been times where i didn't get higher than 19,000 feet yeah. because of the weather mm -hmm. so that's not unusual that that's happens right. sometimes mm -hmm. Well, maybe one thing that was unusual was we knew a storm was coming in. Mm -hmm. We looked at the forecast, which is way better than forecasts in the past. Mm -hmm. And when we saw 80 kilometer per hour winds mm -hmm. throughout a 24 hour period with mm -hmm. temperatures dropping to minus 40, 42, mm -hmm. 45, it was unusual. I think that we didn't 
end up higher on the mountain enduring that. I've been sure. there, I've endured it, it's no fun. Mm -hmm. much, much better to be off the mountain when the yeah. bad weather comes. And you could see the bad weather. You mm -hmm. could see how it affected us in base camp, snowing, cold. Mm -hmm. And you know how much more severe it is the higher you go. Okay. So that would be one unusual thing. We didn't suffer yeah. as much as... <laughs> didn't suffer. Okay, yeah, nice. It's, it's possible to suffer on nice. the Nice. And lastly, one yeah. or two memories that you really enjoyed those moments. Which you felt, Girish, I really enjoyed that moment or this happened and I was quite happy. One or two moments so we can close this assessment on a good note. <laughs> sure. The first would be when we were leaving Mendoza and our driver said, Condor. And I looked out and a huge condor yeah. circled us and then spread its wings directly above us. So oh, I took nice. that as a, a blessing. Of course. And I would then do for me, the very final morning I was in Mendoza and... Uh, I was sitting having a coffee before going to the airport mm. and I thought I want to make sure I I'm grateful for how everything unfolded that neither mm. of us got injured or hurt mm. so I gave my thanks and as I gave my thanks this beautiful bird oh. landed on my table and just stood there staring at me wow and then okay. flew to the chair beside me and just stood there staring at me and I mm. took that as part of the spirit of the land okay. responding going, you're welcome. Thank you for being grateful. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm. So the beginning and the end of the trip were significant for me. Nice. Well, on that note, I do want to thank Mount Akankawa for yeah. keeping us safe and thank you as well for guiding me and keeping both of us safe <laughs> and tolerating me and my behavior for through our two weeks. It wasn't so. hard, Girish. It wasn't hard. Oh, you just have so much tolerance uh, power that... Uh, I'm sure you would have exhausted all of it sometimes, <laughs> but thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay.